the spot from Turkey. Yes. Yeah. The second era, year 703, we're almost at the point of the Artaeum returns after 500 years of absence. In year 812, Rimen secedes from elsewhere. And in Can year 828. Who secedes? All right, what? Who secedes? Rimen from elsewhere. Rimen. I thought you said women. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to elsewhere. <laughs> is the probable birth of Shalti early here. Two years later, the Almeri uh, dominion is reformed to send help elsewhere. So, during this time, the Underking is using the guise of a man named Talos Stormcrown, through which to conduct this dispute. Remember the Aegis Noble part of the Underking? Remember him? Yeah. And basically, you've got two adventurers, two boys, like literally a D&D character duo, boys. that are just adventuring in town. They are uh, Shalti Earlybeard, like I mentioned, who's just a straight warrior guy. And then there's his wizard buddy, Zurin Arthas. And Shalti is like saying, uh, he is basically commanding Zurin Arthas to perform these miracles, because Zurin Arthas has imperial magic, which the Norse have never seen before, so it's like miracles to them. So he, Shalti is basically like making it look like he's performing these miracles. And the Norse are fooled into thinking that Shalti is Talos. <laughs> Um, Ooh, so, I can see where this could go wrong. Um, I can see something bad happening. Uh, in the year 852, the Tiber Wars begin. They are led by General Talos, um, who takes up the name Tiber Septim for the Imperial. So to the to the Empire, or, or to the to himself and Zurin, Talos is known as Shalti, Shalti, you know. To the Norse, he is known as Talos. To the rest of the world, he's known as Tiber Septim. Um, basically, this big fucking deception is happening right here. Um, basically, but the Tiber Wars begin, and these conflicts result in the unification of Tamriel under the Third Empire, which marks the final years of the Second Era, which we're coming upon right now. Mm -hmm. Year 864, the, this is the date of the Red Guard Rebellion on Stros Makai, led by Cyrus and his sister Izara. These are the events of the Elder Scrolls Adventures game, Red Guard. Um, Cyrus and Azara destroy the Imperial fleet and defeat a legion stationed on the Isle. Cyrus himself slays Nathalar, who was Tiber Septim's greatest warrior, because he's a fucking dragon. <laughs> but Cyrus slays Nathalar. No oh, way, I just realized who Nathalar was. <laughs> he escaped the fucking dragon patrol just to kill him. Still and no! This eventually forces Tiber Septim to sign a treaty on terms more favorable to Hamazon than it eventually joins the Empire. Uh, in the year 882, remember Dagoth Ur? Well, Dagoth Ur never kind of went away. He was always kind of lurking in, in the uh, in the uh, dark. Um, it's it's implied that the Dagoth Ur we have now is a reincarnation of the original Dagoth Ur. Um, but he basically he and his Ash vampires. It is said that they awaken underneath Red Mountain, where they then bind themselves to the heart of Lorcan. You know, the heart that's giving the tribunal their powers. Well, the tribunal. They have to go and ba bathe in the heart chamber, in the heart chamber, like every few hundred years to get their powers, right? So the tribunal is heading back. They're like on their stroll. They're catching up before old times. They're like, hey, remember that one time that we betrayed Lord Nerithar? That was a sick. Yeah. <laughs> um, they're, 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 trying, they're, they're walking back. And all of a sudden, they got there with his ash vampires, assault the tribunal. And they're like, oh my god, there's other people here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, which, oh, so, so the tribunal is fully cut off from the heart chamber now which means they are slowly losing their powers. Um, this leads Sotha Seal to develop plans for something called a mechanical heart, which would be a less effective synthetic re replica of the heart of the um, 893, Queen Baron Z soon to be Queen Baron Zaya is born. She is a Dunmer noblewoman. Uh, she was a great advisor to Tiber Septim and reportedly his lover. She would become the first queen of Morrowind. Um, three years later, Tiber Septim conquers Tamriel with aid from the Numidium. The Numidium is another tower of Tamriel. It is a giant dwarven centurion, which existed during the time of the Battle of Red Mountain, called the Brass God. Um, and it's just this big walking fucking machine. And basically, uh, Vec, as, as, uh, in good faith, gives the Numidium to Tiber Septim. What he doesn't let Tiber Septim know is that Vivek has no fucking idea how to operate the Numidium. <laughs> so he basically, it's like a gift, but it's not entirely uh, useful. Right? So it's like 
the French people giving us the Statue of Liberty, and yes. then that Statue of Liberty being used as a fucking weapon. Yes. Got so, it. shortly afterward, the Under King rips out the Mantella, which is the heart of the Numidium, after he perceives its misuse by Tezzer Septim. This led to a conflict between Zurin Arthas and the Under King, which left Zurin Arthas dead, and the Under King licking his wounds in Daggerfall. Uh, not Daggerfall specifically, but Tyrock, I should say. Tiber, then the remaining of the three palaces, he decided to conquer the Somerset Isles and firmly unite the Third Empire. This is the beginning of the Third Era. Any questions about either or two? What the fuck is happening? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, I'm good. So there's three palaces, right? Yes, there is the Talos who have performed miracles, or Zurin Arthas. Who died. Yes, who is dead now. Okay. There is Talos, or Tiber Septim, who is the emperor. Got it. And there is Talos Stormcrown, the under king. Got it. I all three of these people, by the way, all three of these people are Shedwins. I should mention that right now. They all have uh, hearts of war, or um, uh, aspects of shore inside of them. So. Year six of the third era, yeah. the reign of Hoalu Athen Lethen, Duke of Mornwall, begins. Um, uh, year 38 of the third era, Tyler Septim dies, and his grandson, Emperor Pelagius Septim I, is crowned. Um, uh, three years later, Emperor Pelagius is assassinated by the Dark Brotherhood and replaced by Kintira Septim I, cousin to Pelagius. And 48, Kintira dies, Emperor Uriel Septim I is crowned. Yeah. In 64, Uriel dies, replaced by his son, Uriel II. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we are, by the way, I'm just going to be rambling off fucking names for the lineage of the empire. That's how it's going to be for like a few hundred years. I love Uriel, <laughs> um, Uriel Some of these Septim. names are important, some of them aren't. I will tell you which ones you need to pay attention to. If I left out the pointless shit, then I wouldn't be able to torture you guys. <laughs> <laughs>
um, which, which means that like he's got kind of dying slowly. But um, the base uh, spear is taking care of him um, in his tower tell fear. The uh, base spear makes clones of himself, uh, female clones of himself, which he calls his daughter wives. I think there's like seven of them. Um, <laughs> uh, wait, what? Did it's you right. say daughter wives? Yes. Not, he's clones, not he's technically it. not incest. He's but not keeping clones. it in the family. I mean, he's keeping it within his own gene pool. Anyway, yeah. him, and his daughter <laughs> wives, him and his daughter wives are taking care of Yadlin Badlin right now. Um, and Telfir uh, on Barton Tell. <laughs> I can't tell which text. That's he tweaked her. All right. Year oh, no, on the that. third year out. Following the War of the Isles, which is a, just a minor war in the third year, Sir Amiel Lannis forms the Knights of the Nine, which are Templars re- de- dedicated to recovering the Crusaders' relics of Pelennor Whitestrain. There you go. So that's right, the Knights of the Nine. The relics that you talked about? The, the yeah! Knights, <laughs> finally, they're the, back! The Knights of the Nine. I've been waiting. That's what I've been waiting for this entire time. You mentioned this within the first 15 minutes. The Dawn Arrow. <laughs> the Knights of the Nine gather the Crusader's relic, and each of them has their own relic, basically. They're like Power Rangers. Go, go, um, Power Rangers! Um, year, third era, year 120, Antiochus I'm dies. Here. I'm in it. I was waiting. <laughs> Empress Kintira Septim II is crowned by the Elder Council over King Uriel Mantiarco, oh. despite the efforts of his mother, Patena. Patena, I believe, is now the Queen of Solitude. Um, she becomes known as the Wolf Queen. Um, the following year, Uriel III is proclaimed emperor after he takes the imperial city in a fortnight. Um, it he is. takes, he, he just takes the surname Septim. He just takes it for himself. Um, the following oh year, God, the War of the Red that. Diamond starts, involving factions all across mm-hmm. Tamriel. Some are aligned with Potemia and Uriel III. Um, some are aligned with Sepphoris, a magic Septim. And, and their various offspring. So it's basically the year of the Red Diamond is a war of succession about the emperor and, and the seat of the empire. Hmm. Um, the, we're, we have a specific date here, and it's the most important date in the Elder Scrolls. Third year, year 123, the 23rd of Frostfall. Empress Kintara Septim II dies in her cell in High Rock. This is later known as the Day of Broken Diamond. Because it completely, um, it, it, like it, it completely forbade any chance for her and her bloodline to become part of the empire again. Um, this is also, by the way, the Dragon Guard. The Dragon Guard eventually, I don't know if I put that in here. The Dragon Guard eventually uh, accept humans into their ranks, and eventually the Sayasi are completely phased out because they don't die due to not being able to breed. You know, um, it just happens. Yeah, it's just population decline. Um, uh, the, the Dragon Guard becomes the Blades, and the Blades use, uh, this is this is one of the many um, uh, like codes that the Blades use to identify every uh, other members. They would say, where were you on the 23rd of Frostfall? And that is basically how you knew that you saw you were uh, the And that is, that is used in this style. That's yeah. what you fucking said to me. At, at <laughs> I was like, what the fuck are you talking about, you bitch? <laughs> In the third era, year 127, Emperor Uriel III dies and repla- is replaced by Sepphoris I. His reign is marked by nothing but war. Four years later, the Knights of the Nine dissolve following the war. That's okay. They're, they're going to be they're going to be important. Six years later, year 127. What? No, we just got <laughs> them back in the play. Boys we, just got back in town, and then they, they went home. They the left town. United. They got. Together and then you rip it's them a away. It's a tragedy. They will be important. They will. <laughs> the boys got back Year in town. Year 137. Look at my third. face. It, I am displeased. Year 137 I of the third era. Queen Fatima the kid dies right now. Queen Fatima dies during the siege. She's dead. Two years later, <laughs> Sir Casimir kills a beggar. Sir Casimir, by the way, was one of the Knights of the Nine. Sir Casimir, he had the gauntlets of the Crusader, but he killed a beggar in the chapel of Sinar and Coral, and basically the gauntlet slipped off his hands, and like Thor's hammer, nobody could move them, and nobody was worthy of them. In Stindar's place? Yeah, oh, Stindar's, he, he, killed, he killed a beggar in Stindar's chapel. Oh. Um, so basically the, gaunt, the gauntlet just slipped from his hands, nobody could pick them up anymore. So Stindar. Yes. Will somebody be able to pick them up later? Yes, you will, in oblivion. Oh, 